Good morning. So it's uh, 2022. Can you believe that? Uh, so today I've got these sort of the 10 best things that I've come across this week. So highly recommend everyone check this out. The first thing, by the way, is uh, the road tour, or the national tour of uh, the Daniel Fisher's uh, adaptation of Oklahoma, which uh, I wrote about this, I think like two years ago, three years ago, maybe, when my friends Rob and Sean took me to it. It was on Broadway, and I think it won like all kinds of Tony Awards. It is so magnificent. I can't even begin to tell you. So it's on, uh, it's starting this week in Pittsburgh, and it's traveling all around the country, ending in Tempe later this year. So I highly, highly recommend that everyone um, checks this out. It's probably the very best Broadway, you know, show musical that I've ever seen. And the adaptation, what's so fascinating about it is that some of it has been contemporized by the casting choices. And then the other thing is that in a very nuanced way, they, um, sort of focused on these mental health issues that, you know, we're all running into constantly uh, with people on the street and so forth. And and they made it so like incredibly palpable in this play. Anyway, so check that out. I, I put in the link to the tour and the tickets and all that because I, I cannot recommend anything more highly than this. Uh, so that's Oklahoma. Then also, um, you know, YouTube, I don't have TV anymore, as I told you guys a long time ago. Uh, so I've been very reliant on YouTube and it's been great for discovery. Uh, this week, it, it, this guy's been around forever, but I just discovered him, this comedian, stand-up comedian called Joe List. Um, really, really good. And he's like from, he's a New York-based um, comic. And often is playing in clubs around town. I'm gonna to go check him out very soon. Um, so that's something to check out. In April, I am also, unless, you know, who knows what's gonna happen with anything, but my plan is to head to Arizona. Brad has got two major museum shows there, one's in uh, at Scottsdale and one's in Tucson. So I wanna see those and the Maricopa County Fair. So those of you who watch this and those of you who are generally on my um, state and county fair thingy, let me know if you wanna join me because uh, I think that'll be really fun. It would only be for like maybe four days, early April. Uh, and then the fourth thing I wrote about, I wrote about 10 things, but the fourth thing that struck me as being super interesting was I think that this guy, Moisha Manor, who um, he's in Miami now, just gobbling up all this real estate. And he has a thing, I'm familiar with him from uh, Jersey City, where he has, it's called the Manor Contemporary. It's a, like a cultural center. So he's clearly he's very interested in art and so forth, but I don't think he's really that good at it. And then at the same time, Adam Newman, who was the founder of WeWork, who clearly is very visionary in terms of thinking about how, you know, how are we going to live? How do we want to play? How do we want to work? But seems to have very little in the way of business acumen. I mean, he's very good at spending other people's money and not making too much money except for himself. But those two guys, because they're both in Miami now, just buying up heaps of real estate. If they could partner, oh my God, that would be like, I, I think, it would be killer. They would just, I don't know, it would be great. So anyway, no one's brought this up, but if they think about it, that's kind of what I think is a cool idea. And then I wanna end this by talking about Omicron, which everyone seems to have now. I have not gotten it yet, but I fully, you know, I wake up every morning and think, am I still good? Yes, I'm still good. But anyway, but, Brad's, I just want to share that Brad's family in Wisconsin, very large extended families. Dad's 94. His nephews have all got like little babies now. Um, you know, so the whole family's there, but they're just 
rabidly anti-vax. I think three people in the family have been vaccinated. Anyway, so they, you know, we're like, I mean, I just sort of feel like I'm vaxxed, I'm boosted, I think everyone should be. But, you know, if people don't, I mean, what are you going to do? You just, you have to, you know, people have to do what they want to do. Anyway, over, they, the whole family got together over Christmas and over New Year. Now they all, the whole family has got COVID. But they're seemingly doing fine. I uh, Brad's been talking to them. I have not. But Brad spoke to his dad yesterday, and his dad like was on the normally like talks, talks, talks. Did not want to talk, and then also said he'd been like kind of had that kind of brain fog, like he couldn't remember if he had taken his pills and so forth. So anyway, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that these guys survive this. I mean, I can't believe two years already. They've, you know, it's kind of says something about farm stock people because uh, why, how they've not gotten it in all this time is pretty remarkable. So I hope they all pull through on this and um, maybe rethink this vaccination thing. I don't know. But anyway, so keep your fingers crossed for that family. Um, and that's it for today. So um, let me know what you think. Have a great week and I will check in with you guys next week. Ciao.